Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my friends, all across the happy little globe today, and welcome back to Riverbend Discovery Center. As always, my name is Leaf, and it is so freaking great to have you guys back here. We are working on a beautiful, well, not really beautiful, it's kind of scummy, but a scummy little primate area. So over here, I recently just remastered the Squirrel Monkey as well as the Tufted Capuchin, and I thought, you know what? I haven't used these little guys in the longest time. Why not build for them this time around? So that's exactly what I'm doing over here. So one of the things I really wanted to do was kind of replicate Southwick's kind of monkey cages. They really aren't the best, but that's kind of what fits the zoo really well. So we do our best over here to kind of recreate them. If you guys have ever been to Southwick Zoo, it's a it's it's honestly a really great collection, but some of the exhibits just really aren't the best in some cases. But with all that being said, it still is a really nice place to go. Like, you know, probably once a year just to check it out. I still love Roger Williams more than anything, but I don't know. With all that being said, though, we are checking all this out right now. We're building our backstage building right over here really quickly. Nothing too serious back there. We don't even have any backstage area because it is just too damn small. And usually when you keep monkeys like this, they really aren't kept in the biggest of cages. But with all that being said, we do give them a lot of area to kind of roam outside. So one of the things I did want to do was do some custom cages. And we use a lot of different pieces, namely the mesh. Like all the chain mesh is wonderful for all of this. But we also do use those hinges as well to give it a little bit more realism, give it a little bit more groundwork. Um, and we also use the 2D Noto full stop to give it a little bit more of a, I don't know, cap, I guess. I don't really know what I'm going for, but in the end, it looks pretty damn good, so I'm pretty happy with it. But essentially, we can just standardize this. We build one section of this first, and this is something that I really do recommend for anyone trying to get involved in these, I don't know, more detailed buildings. Build just sections of it first, okay? build a detailed section of it and then you could recreate it and keep on pushing forward with it and you can just copy it over and over again because that's your template it works it sticks and that's exactly what makes this exhibit look so damn good in the end so one of the things i did want to do over here was have it be sunk in a little bit that's something that southwick's does have kind of a little bit um it has a lower viewing and an upper viewing, but there's no lower viewing over there. I just want to have like a ditch right in the middle. So it gives the primates in here a little bit more room for traversing. I also use Mr. Zoov's mud walls over here and we add them to the little bit of the blueprint mall. And they just work so well in here. I don't even need to recolor them because they fit perfectly. So we just duplicate it on both sides. It takes a little bit to get it to work exactly how I want it to. Since it is a little bit of a recluse, I don't know, like lower down area. Recluse is probably the best word for that. Uh, because it is kind of like that, I did want to make sure that you can actually see via there. So that's why we mess with those mud walls just a little bit. And we do add these caps on each end of the kind of monkey areas, I guess you could kind of call them. I don't really know. But essentially what that does, it kind of caps off these areas pretty well so you actually know where the exhibit starts and where the exhibit ends and then we actually go in here and do some light foliage work obviously we got to use all the beautiful new prairie winkle bushes and then after that we use a nice layer of bracken nothing too crazy it's just our typical palette that we've been kind of sticking to i should probably go back in there and use some nettle but we also do use those beautiful new dogwood bushes as well they look insanely good over there and then essentially we just cover up the rest of the area that I want covered in mulch with mulch. Simple as that. It makes it look very nice and very clean. So one of the things I also get to work on over here is a little bit more of the outdoor decoration, just making sure that the guests have a nice little area to view the monkeys from and an area without them being able to actually touch the mesh. So that is something that is quite a bit of an issue when it comes to like these lower budget zoos. A lot of the times you can actually see areas where, you know, guests can kind of touch animals and that's usually not good. A lot of 
Zelda at times, like, guests can kind of carry some disease. Especially with primates, you gotta be very careful. There's a lot of cross-disease contamination. When it comes to stuff like lemurs, small monkeys, and stuff like that, usually those are the ones that you gotta really worry about. Especially nowadays with COVID, you really don't want to be giving COVID to, like, all your monkeys and whatnot. But with all that being said, here we go, just making the rest of the climbing structures. But we actually find a beautiful one by BZ as always. I want to integrate a little bit more of a natural one in there. So we use like the Japanese tree, like the cherry blossom, broken, whatever. I don't even know anymore. But it just fits it so wonderfully. And then we also add something else over there. Um, I believe this person made like this modular set and we actually use a lot of their ropes in there too. But going back to what I was saying about disease, I know it's always such a cheery topic. I just want to add another layer of protection from the guests, from the animals, with like the form of another fence. So that's why we start to really add that over there and separate it with mulch and stuff. Just the more ways you can deter guests from the actual exhibits, the better. Because, listen, you gotta keep the animals pretty safe. And I also add a little bunch of bananas to that exhibit as well. I think that was a really cute touch. But moving on through here, we're actually working on the squirrel monkeys. Their exhibit really isn't as good as the tufted capuchins, but it still comes out pretty good in the end. It's pretty uniquely shaped, and that's exactly what makes me happy with it in the end. So here we go, just making the general frame of it, making it feel a lot more cohesive within the actual story of the building. Um, it just feels very ragtagged on, and I feel like that's what works to its benefit. It looks very, I don't know, kind of bummy, I guess you could kind of describe it as, which works incredibly well for kind of what we're going for. I really like it because of that. And with all that being said, we just fix up the rest of the mesh, make it all look pretty good in the end. No color changing of the mesh this time around. I kind of... I kind of want to go forward with like this nice blackish grayish kind of mesh not really the green mesh we were starting off with that felt a little bit too high budget I want to bring it down just a little bit more we have a lot of high budget areas within the zoo I mean we have like longers and stuff we got to make some budget cuts somewhere you know and especially with these kinds of monkeys the squirrel monkeys and tufted capuchins you would definitely see these in a lot more lower budget zoos primates are actually extremely common in lower budget zoos which is extremely surprising but you know what we're fine going along with that sure we can roll with that so that's exactly how i integrate them in here we're just really going ham with them and we do got to get some aviaries going as well so once we actually do get some birds in here we could start to experiment with that maybe we could even set up like a greenhouse or something for ibises or something i don't really know uh, we're just going forward with whatever we feel like. I'm just really enjoying this entire project, and I hope you guys are too still, because I'm having so much fun with it. I just got like this huge hit of resurgence with it, especially with updating some of the older mods. I kind of want to do a petting zoo soon, because like all the petting zoo animals are getting updated. I don't know, I just really hope you guys are enjoying this entire project so far. And we also do minor backstage work over here, nothing really too crazy, just a little bit of stuff off the beaten path adding some trees some bushes and just kind of separating that staff area a little bit just so that guests don't really go wandering right into there I hope you guys don't mind that but here we actually go to work on making the interior of the exhibit and I wanted to cover up those mulch pieces by using some bracken it kind of fits both sides of the wall too so it works incredibly well in the end and we actually do dress up a little bit more of the path right behind us nothing really too crazy but we do add some stuff right over there just to kind of block guests off from going off the trail and whatnot that's something that i really do love integrating in this whole project is you know just making sure the guests are safe making sure that they're staying on track and, I don't know, it's just very fun when it comes to that. I don't even know the vibe that this zoo is going for anymore, but it just feels so fun just to really integrate a lot more of these techniques in here. But adding a few more climbing enrichments over there, the monkeys have actually escaped and they will continue to escape after this. So I will try and figure out where they're actually escaping from. No idea how they're doing it, no idea where they're doing it, but listen, 
we can sit back and enjoy it. We can laugh at them for doing so. It's not like they're really going to tear anyone's face off. No, they're not chimpanzees or anything like that. They're just little squirrel monkeys, even though they are kind of little devils at that. But adding some bromeliads and some of these beautiful little, um, I don't even know what you would call those, the ponytail palms, but we use them for something else. I think they look pretty damn good at that. But with all that being said, here's the B-roll. Oh my gosh. I can't believe we made it to the end of this episode. That's wild. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I really do appreciate you guys stopping by. I'm going to take off right here. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the cinematics. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next episode. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.